All right, and we're recording. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Geek Vibes Live. Um, for this evening's episode, I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me two awesome gentlemen, the first being Dom. How are you this evening, Dom? I'm good. Uh, I cleaned my car today, and I, I found my Freddy glove that I was looking for. <laughs> um, and I'm really glad I found it because if I would have got pulled over and it happened to touch my car, it could have been weird because <laughs> these are actually metal. Uh, so, you know, oh. it's a, it, was, it was a good day. Good find. I mean, that would be pretty good to confront anti-masker people with. <laughs> be like, put on your freaking mask. <laughs> So I say keep it in your car, but uh, that's quite a way to start the show. Dane, I don't know how you're going to follow that up. <laughs> that is an aggressive way to go into me, uh, but I, I'm i happy to be on the show. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I hate using this term, but I'm an OG because I was around during the first generation of Geek Vibes. I've hosted the show. I've written the notes for the show. So T.I., I know how much of a pain in the ass that is. And uh, it's good to be back. It's going to be fun. Um, honestly, I didn't have a lot going on. Uh, there's nothing going on Sunday, so I probably would have been watching season three of Living Single um, <laughs> or watching old wrestling. Uh, maybe Bob's Burgers. So, you know, this is much more, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, it's much better thing to be doing with my time, basically, you know? Yeah, you didn't get me in the first two that you put on, but as soon as you said Bob's Burgers, I was like, okay, now I'm good here. That I have fallen asleep many a night to Bob's Burgers, so awesome one there. But I am very excited to have both of you. Dane, I'm excited to have you back here. Um, and I don't know, the video stuff has kind of worked with us so far, so why not? And I wanted an excuse to show off the new headset. So uh, <laughs> let's go into our topics for this evening. And I want to start it off with, I think, something fun. But apparently there are reports that Disney Plus is uh, looking to revive the X-Men animated series. Um, Dom, what do you think about that? I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, that was probably my favorite, if not like top two favorite cartoons growing up. And I think it was very much ahead of its time with like the messaging that was embedded into the um, animated series. And uh, I think that's, I feel like that's where a lot of um, people, at least, you know, from 23 and up, that's where we got a lot of our X-Men love from. So, um, I don't know what they're waiting on or what kind of contract stipulations there are for them to do it. But, yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. They definitely, definitely should do it. It's funny because, believe it or not, my introduction to the X-Men was X-Men Evolution. That is where my, like, introduction for X-Men came. And then, obviously, yeah, obviously then discovering... Uh, X and the anime series. I think why not? It's a streaming service. There's say not a lot going on. I think it would be easier to do an animated series as opposed to say a live action series. So yeah, as you said, no brainer. But Dane, what do you think about this news? Would you want them to revive X Men the animated series? Um yeah, actually I definitely would. Um we had a long time ago actually on this show, back when we used to do uh, interviews um, on Geek Vibes Live. We had the Lawalds, who are the writers for uh, X-Men, and we also had Cal Dodd, who voiced Wolverine. Uh, that's one thing that's essential. If he still wants to do it, get Cal Dodd to come back and do Wolverine's voice. That's like that's something you need, but the one thing that hindered X-Men, the animated series, for me when I was younger, I definitely, just like you, man, uh, just watched the shit out of it, um, was the quality of the animation. Like, it was good, but if you, it had complex storylines, complex plots, but when you compare it to something like Batman animated series, it was like, you know, you couldn't even compare the two. So if you do a modern interpretation, take the animation style, but like modernize it, and then you also have the really good story plots. I just want to know, are they starting over with, and we're going to see them, you know, kind of do the same episodes and add some new stuff in there, or is this going to be a continuation? That's my biggest question. 
Yeah, that would be definitely something that they would have to figure out. Obviously, with today's technology, they would probably go in a different direction for their animated style, make it more modern. But I would imagine that, say, real diehard fans of the show would want to keep it somewhat um, faithful to the original series. So they would have to find, say, that happy medium between the two. I always say that... Uh, I don't know if either of you have watched the Harley Quinn animated series on... Love yeah, love it. it. To me, the animation style was obviously modern, but also reminded me a little of Batman the animated series. Yep. So if they can find something like that, that would be really cool with the new animated series. But hopefully they'll do it. Um, I mean, Disney Plus it really needs to come out with some original content. Who knows when we're getting WandaVision, Loki, uh, The Falcon and Winter Soldier, or any of the other Marvel live-action shows they're supposed to be coming out with. And anime seems like it would be a lot easier to do at this point of time. So, fingers crossed. I have a crossed. suggestion on uh, that. Yes. Uh, all I have to say is if they're going to remake X-Men... I don't know why they're not doing this in a movie format, because I know Kevin Feige wanted to years ago, and I know that uh, Jordan Peele really wants to do it, but redo Gargoyles. Give us another mm -hmm. Gargoyles animated series. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I think it would do well. Like, I would love a live-action series or movie, but just like with X-Men, like you said, give us an animated series. Come on. More episodes. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think, uh, as I just said, with the technology of today, a live-action Gargoyle series would look really nice. At the time, I don't think it necessarily would have looked that great, but right now, I mean, the way that they're able to make things so realistic, you would definitely be able to make a really great Gargoyles uh, live-action. But, yeah, animated, no-brainer. We need more content. We need more of that shit, so let's get to it. But I want to remain in the Marvel universe here and we do have some director news and that is Captain Marvel 2 has landed a new director and it is Nia DaCosta who is the director for the upcoming Candyman reboot, speaking of Jordan Peele. And um, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen Candyman, the reboot, yet, so I can't attest to her work. I've, To be honest with you, I've never heard of Nia DaCosta, but it is awesome that Captain Marvel has gained a director, and it's just one instead of the two from the first Captain Marvel movie that we got. But, Dane, what do you think about uh, Captain Marvel 2 landing a director, and are you familiar with any of Nia DaCosta's work? Well, no, because uh, she made one film, um, more of an indie film that started off her career, and then now her second one's going to be Candyman. So I would actually say, first of all, if you are a Candyman fan or if you want a, this movie to be good and you're expecting some good stuff, the fact that Marvel's already going for her and making her the director of the next Captain Marvel, you don't have much to worry about. That's an extremely good thing. So I'm hoping the next Candyman's really good. It, it, ha it looks awesome. Uh, the trailer blew me away, so um, I'm just hoping that that reflects well, and if they're already picking her for the role of director, obviously they've seen it, and they see a lot of potential in her, so... Yeah, and I, as I said, I'm really happy that they're going with the one director route as opposed to the two directors. I don't know how you felt about the first Captain Marvel movie. I fairly liked it. I wouldn't say that it ranks as the highest. I wouldn't say that it ranks as the lowest. In my personal opinion, I think I liked it for everything, say, but Captain Marvel. Like, I really liked... I'm a big Ben Mendelsohn fan, so... Yeah. Him I don't give a shit like I love that and the fact that they brought back Ronan even if it was for small scenes I enjoy so and visually I still liked it so I think that they obviously saw the success that it had but then also the criticism that it had and of course we did through just the trolls and looked at the legit criticism and I think a lot of that stems from having two different directors who clearly weren't say on the same page with each other so that way they can at least go in a more concise direction and Marvel has had success with having directors who have horror movies in their background so that seems really good but Dom you're our resident like horror fan here so have you seen Nia DaCosta's work and what do you think about her being nabbed for Captain Marvel 2? 
I, I haven't I haven't uh, seen any of her work. I know she did uh, a couple episodes of like uh, Top Boy, um, but um, it's exciting because she's only thirty years old, and we need like new filmmakers. We need new writers. We need new yep. producers. And the fact that they're giving her a chance is great um, because you know since it's, it, since it's Marvel, of course they're gonna whatever helps you need, we'll, we'll get it for you if she needs it because she might just be that great of a mind. That he, I think she co-wrote the Candyman with Jordan Peele. So clearly, if you can match wits with Jordan Peele, she's got something there. Um, but yeah, just having another female director too. Uh, I've been watching a lot of um, actor roundtables lately, and that's one of the things that they always kind of mention is like a lack of diversity in uh, the higher-up positions, whether it's um, film, who the owners of the film companies or production companies, but like directors and writers, it's always the same people. And we all know, because we, when we see certain films, we're like, oh, that's that person's work or this person's work. And it's like the same 10 guys all the time. Um, so to add another female to the, the lexicon of directors, especially someone that's young and she can bring... Um, some things that, like, you know, she's more in touch with society than, say, someone like, you know, Scorsese. Because Scorsese's been in the game for so long. That's true. And he's been for so long. He doesn't have any new takes on anything, which is why people didn't like the Irishman as much as he thought they would. So you have a young girl who is a little more grounded, and you're giving her these big budget productions. I mean, it can go very left. If, you know I mean, if you... Uh, if she's just not creatively, you know, there. But like you said, if Marvel's trusting her, they must have saw something. And um, I mean, I, I feel like there's only up she can go. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. I mean, because with uh, the last Captain Marvel, she can only do better, you know. <laughs> I, I will maintain my status that it wasn't the worst Marvel movie. That still is Thor The Dark World to me. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's definitely up there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I remember, I think we talked about this at some point, Dom, that at you know some point Marvel has said that they were looking for a female director for Captain Marvel 2, and you had, of course, some people were saying, well, who cares, uh, as long as the person's good, but then right. us going in the direction of, well, a I, woman would obviously, oh, sorry, Dane, go I ahead. Hate, I I'm sorry, I, I hate right that. Now. I hate that concept. It's like, how... Perspective matters, and it doesn't matter if it's a Marvel movie or if it's a biopic. If you can get behind the person's head and you have more of an experience, whether you be female or a certain race, I have no idea what the fuck people are talking about. That shit drives me crazy. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, I mean, when we posted that on Twitter and someone said that exact comment saying, oh, what does it matter if the person's good, it's good. And I think I said something along the lines of like, well, imagine if, you know, Black Panther had been directed by, you know, a white person and they and someone was like, there's plenty of movies out there with a person of color as a lead directed by a white person. I'm like, OK, maybe yes, but like. You know, as Dane just said, perspective matters. Like, Black Panther had Ryan Coogler behind it, and it obviously was a perspective that someone who isn't a person of color wouldn't have. So if you have this movie, Captain Marvel, like, you need that female perspective. Um, and I'm pretty excited for it. You both pointed out that she's behind Candyman, and it's really just... Um, it seems good. It seems really good. And if Marvel has confidence, they, they do that, right? They brought in James Gunn. They brought in the Russo brothers. And they have done really great work with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So hopefully Nia DaCosta can go in the same way and have a nice little future in Marvel. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to point that out. And I always like to kind of remain in the worlds for the most part that we're in. And this is just a little... Thing here, but speaking of Jordan Peele, the upcoming series Lovecraft uh, Country has gotten uh, certified fresh by Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't know if you guys seen the trailer for that, but it looked really good. So, Dom, um, have you seen the trailer for Lovecraft Country, and 
are you excited for it? What do you think it means, you know, with Rotten Tomatoes certifying it fresh? Because they don't give people often a score of 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, the trailer looks really good. And, uh, and it's weird how Hollywood has these trends, right? We saw, um, like, Watchmen, and we saw um, uh, Umbrella Academy. And they all tend, like, they're, they go through these kind of patterns where everybody starts dealing with a similar time period, right? And it's a lot of this, like, 50s, 60s, you know, 40s, where there is a lot of, and I think it's because it's a mirror of now. We have these race relation issues within our society, and then you can take it back to the old times and, like, look, this stuff was happening back then, and you see how stupid it is, and we're doing this stuff now in 2020, and it kind of gives people some perspective to look at, like, how far we should have came and what things were doing wrong. Um, so it's very interesting how they're, they're doing it. Um, but this one looks um, it looks really good. I noticed the, the main actor is from the Five Bloods. So I guess he's this new up-and-coming guy. I keep seeing him pop up on different things. And then Journey Smollett um, is on, like, a, a hot streak right now. So, um, and with it, you know, being HBO, I mean, they don't they don't miss usually. You know, they're very good at what they do over there. So yeah, I'm, I I gotta get HBO Max because I really want to watch it. <laughs> You have to get HBO Max. I will tell you really quick that this has nothing to do with anything. I just watched the movie An American Pickle on HBO Max, and it's surprisingly good. So it has some, like, good content HBO Max so far, so you should definitely check it out. I like what you said about this trend that is seemingly going on in Hollywood right now with the type of story they wish to tell. Like, I saw that in Umbrella Academy. And also, they came out maybe a month or so ago, Penny Dreadful City of Angels, which took place in the 1930s. And if you watch it, you could tell that they were exactly trying to mirror exactly what's happening now, but by just using the 1930s as a catalyst for that. So, um, But, Dane, have you seen the trailer for Lovecraft Country, and are you excited to watch it? Yeah, actually I am. Um, it's, it's new on the radar for me, um, but I like the concept. It's extremely interesting, the visuals, and just the, the like, I'm, I'm trying to remember what the, uh, the, the uh, introduction, or at least the, uh, what people gave this, a synopsis. It was something on the lines of, like, you know, comparing the demons of, of racism with the monsters of H.R. Lovecraft, and you see Ch Chitulu at the end of it. Like, that's what threw me off. I forgot that Lovecraft was in the name, and all of a sudden, like, the, this monster pops out at the end, I'm like... Oh, uh, okay. So it's going to be <laughs> I it's it going to be symbolism. Okay, gotcha. And yeah, I'm uh I'm interested. It looks very stylized. It looks really cool. I like that that trend that keeps on happening. And I've been saying this for a while. I this is um something that's separate, but I think they need to bring a lot of those storylines that you guys were talking about with Watchmen and and incorporate it when they incorporate the X-Men and the MCU. I think that should definitely be a driving power. Um, I'm the one who thinks that they should get Denzel Washington to play Magneto and have his perspective based on the civil rights movement since we can't really do the uh, World War II aspect anymore because they would be too fucking old. So that's always something I've kind of uh, incorporated or thought of. So it's it's happening now. It's happened in the past. Uh, art reflects that and kind of gives perspective and also shows people some stuff they didn't know happened. So uh, I hope that this does that too. And it looks very horror centric and I, I love horror stuff so um it's fun okay so it's funny that you're talking about denzel washington as magneto i was just talking about this guy recently giancarlo esposito i feel like a great magneto um i've been kind of obsessed with him because he's literally in everything now the fact that he's going to be in the mandalorian season two they said that he's going to have quite a huge role in the boys season two and he's also what the main villain for the new far cry so i'm like he's oh. everywhere right now and uh, not only that he was he was one of the the meanest villains most ruthless villains in breaking bad yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would be down. I would be down for him to play Professor X, honestly. I, I don't care on either of that, you know. I guess I just want him to play more of a villain, but... Yeah, yeah. If he's not, good at villains. 
He's good at villains, but maybe if he felt like not pigeonholing himself yeah. into, say, just the villain role, then, you know, as you said, he's great in everything, so I don't care. Throw him how you want him. But I think he did say, either he said that Marvel has approached him or he would love to be a part of Marvel. So it's like, yes, please contact Giancarlo Esposito. Yes. That would be yeah. really fantastic. But, yeah, um... Lovecraft Country, I watched the trailer, and I completely forgot that it was supposed to be, like, monster-centric. And I was like, oh, they're just telling a story of, you know, the times and the social climate. And then suddenly it's like, oh, shit, monsters. Okay, that's right. Um, that's happening. So it just looks really cool, and it's clear that Journey is getting more work since Birds of Prey, which is always great. Dom has the poster for Birds of Prey right behind him there, <laughs> all representing Journey, <laughs> you know? Um, so she's getting into it, but what was I going to say? Um, uh, oh, it is, I believe, rumored that America Chavez will appear in Doctor Strange 2. Now, I'm going to start this off by saying I don't know a whole lot about the character America Chavez, um, which, you know, I'm not the biggest comic book reader. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, <laughs> I've, I've been out of the game in comics for a while, so I know a little bit about her, so I feel you. But... It's crazy because if it is true, it's like, cool, they're obviously looking to introduce new characters, but it seems like, uh, aren't they going to put a lot in Doctor Strange? It seems like that it's not going to be just, say, a, and I was talking to someone about this, that these Marvel movies with their sequels aren't just being centered around the t uh, title character. They're looking to introduce all these other characters. They're looking to make it more of a team-up and... I'm guessing that's so that they can speed things up in their phases to not take their time really to introduce new characters. But Dom, are you aware of really who America Chavez is? If so, are you excited at the possibility that she may be involved in Doctor Strange 2? Um, I know a little bit. I've heard the name, in, you know, in passing uh, and like comic book store, uh, conversations i don't know too much I, I if i'm not mistaken she's from a different like parallel universe so it kind of makes sense why should it be in, in dr strange too which like you said i think that's what they're going to do with this movie is that i feel like at some point he's going to pass through and we'll see you know mirror universes and we'll see characters that we might know or they might mention a name and that'll be like uh, easter eggs for later works um so um and, and, and with Marvel, like Feige and them are very good with representation and how they put things in perfect timing. So with her being like Miss America and um, being, you know, I think, I guess Latina by the last name, I'm guessing. So, um, I mean, like we've talked about before, representation matters. And, you know, a lot of the superheroes uh, that everyone loves, it's a boys club. So we need more female superheroes. Because a lot of times, the female characters are a lot more badass than the guys. The guys are just brolic looking, so that's why they get the attention. But when I was looking at her powers, I mean, she's a good replacement for Captain America. So I don't know what they're going to do going forward, but it's very interesting. And I think I could be totally wrong here, but I think I had read that America Chavez is also gay. So that would be really their, what, attempt at trying to finally put someone who is, you know, gay in the MCU. Because, you know, they try and, like, put that here and there. It was total BS when they said, oh, in Endgame we had the first gay character. And it was, you know, one of the Russo brothers, like, slipping in saying that he was on a date with a guy. And I'm like, that doesn't count, Marvel. <laughs> that doesn't count at all. So um, this could be their way of trying to integrate more diversity in their movies by including someone who you know because there isn't really a whole lot of hispanic superheroes in general in uh the big screen and especially not in the mcu so this could be their way of introducing a character who i also believe is beloved by those who read comics now and then also having uh someone who's hispanic and having someone who is gay so let's hope they don't water her down because Marvel tries 
I think they have good intentions, but when it comes to that, because I guess they're Disney, they always kind of, you know, skate around it. But, uh, Dane, you said you have kind of some knowledge on America Chavez. Uh, what's your uh, thoughts on her being rumored to be in Doctor Strange 2? Well, uh, a lot of echoing what you guys said. Um, I think that it's good to have uh, some more Hispanic superheroes, also some representation of LGBTQ uh, characters. But, you know, with the Latino superheroes, it's very true within Marvel and DC, just in general, there's not a lot of them out there. I've talked to Joel. We've had a conversation, and Joel will kill me if I forget this. Pretty sure he's Puerto Rican, um, and he's that's been his biggest complaint. We've talked about it. Like, you could do, I guess, White Tiger and Black Tarantula uh, outside of this new character that I created. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to have that. I think that Doctor Strange is going to be very similar to The Flash in the sense of they're going to show us a lot of different stuff, a lot of eye candy. Some of it will become part of that universe. Some of it will just be for the movie itself. Um, and maybe she'll be a part of the next universe because we could use a new character, we could use uh, that type of uh, concept. Uh, my whole thing, and it's not like they made a big announcement of this, but in terms of a huge business company like Disney or, or even Marvel by itself, a lot of the times it seems like when they do stuff like this, it's just to get attention and try to, it's a business scheme. And that I don't like, that seems dirty. So, you know, either way, as long as we're benefiting of getting some more uh, characters, you know, female, whatever, what have you, uh, that's a good thing in general. Yeah, I mean, it is it is totally a grab. Let's be honest here that it is their way of saying, okay, we need to learn how to bring uh, people into the movie theaters and people are getting tired of... Uh, I went to a summit like years ago and it was a talking about diversity and they called it the uh, stale, pale, and male. So I feel like that's what, you know, Disney is sitting there like, okay, people are getting tired of the stale, pale, and male. How do we bring people in? Oh, well, you know, this is what... And so, yes, at first it could be viewed as something of a cash grab, um, but hopefully this will show them that this is what sells, this is what people want to see, and yep. they can get... And not just people in front of the screen, but people behind it because I believe Anthony Mackie said recently that there's a huge lack of diversity behind the screen as well um, so they need to definitely fix that and move forward but I mean listen I would be happy in general with any sort of Marvel news as long as it can like start back up I believe they are preparing to restart production on Shang-Chi which is awesome uh, they showed what the actual set is going to look like, apparently, and that looked really cool. So hopefully we'll get uh, something in the near future. Oh. I want Marvel. Go ahead. Sorry. No, before you move on, I just remembered something that you said and I think is actually a, a very good point about, you know, Marvel's problem, it seemed like last time, was some of the movies, this movies introduce someone and keep the story going to get the Thanos. And I hope now their new thing isn't going to be, all right, we're going to introduce all these characters one by one in these movies, and that's really what these movies are for instead of, like, you know, good standalone stories. Like, that's that's one of my kind of worries with Marvel. They learn I, from the past. Yeah. I think that, though, it is trying to work towards something. What it is, I don't think we know just yet, just like with the first Infinity Saga, we didn't know originally that it was going to Thanos, but I think be, the fact that they are trying to throw all these characters into the sequels and they're trying to come up with all of these different Disney Plus shows, that means that they are trying to catapult to a bigger story and they're trying to do it quicker than they did before because they don't want to wait another 10 years to have the showdown with the next big bat. That's just my yeah. feeling on it. I think that this shows that they're even more so going in that direction. And again, I don't know enough of the comic book know-how to guess who the next is. I know everyone says uh, Galactus and stuff like that, but um, 
We'll have to see. Time will only tell. But let's move on. Um, we got some sequel news, speaking about sequels, and apparently John Wick 5 is confirmed. And they said if all goes well, uh, permitting Keanu Reeves' schedule, they will look to film 4 and 5 back-to-back, -back, which is very ambitious on them. And it's a bit crazy. They're like, we haven't even come out with 4, but... They're getting a five already. So, uh, Dane, what do you think about this? I mean, here's the thing. It's like the first John Wick, when I watched it, I thought the concept was awesome, and they threw me off because I didn't know what the hell the movie was about, and the way they stylized it, it made, made it look like it was an indie film until you get about a third into it, and then his dog dies, and then shit goes downhill from there. But the mythos that they've created and all the fun that they've had you know what, I don't know what the hell, I don't, I don't even remember what happens at the end of the third one, okay? But if he's still on the run, I hope that he has, like, a bunch of assassins after them, and for some reason, one's Matt Damon, and the other one's Daniel Craig, and the <laughs> other one's, like, you know, insert guy that usually plays a badass here, Tom Cruise even, pay him a bunch of fucking money to jump off a pyramid. <laughs> yeah, and then Keanu, and, and Keanu has to take, take out all of them, like, you know, and fight all of them. I don't know, like... Just, just keep on making it absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's, it's very much, I think, how people feel about the, um, the uh, Fast and the Furious series. You know, they're fun. And uh, they're really well done. Keanu does a lot of his own stunts because he's actually that much of a badass. And I like Keanu Reeves. He actually seems like a nice dude. Not the greatest, greatest actor of all time, but, you know, chill guy. I'd smoke yeah. a lot with him. <laughs> me too um if he's into that sort of stuff he looks like he may but um he sounds like it i'm just saying <laughs> that's how he agreed to do the third bill and tell bill and movie. Yeah. They, they're like you can get all the weed that you want and he's like okay sold thank you um but so just to let you know dane and i guess spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the john wick trilogy it ended the third one with him falling off a roof and then hanging out with uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character and them kind of making this agreement to go up against the uh, the high table because now they're all after him. Um, all right. Yeah, the first one still is so my Now we know who needs to play the high table. Like I said, Daniel Craig, Matt Damon, <laughs> uh, Charlie Staron. Just put them oh, all in the thing, you know? I like that. I like the Charlie Staron. Uma Thurman? Yeah, just kill, kill Bill, you know, just make it that on the nose. Like, don't do Expendables, <laughs> but kind of do Expendables, you know? Yeah. <laughs> do Expendables, but better. Um, yeah. I, actually, yeah. I actually really liked the first Expendables, and it kind of just, like, went Dude. ridiculous. I loved the first John Wick movie, um, and then it's just gotten crazier since then. I'm interested in knowing what the hell is going to happen in the fourth one. Um, I don't, what Suma calls it, I wouldn't necessarily want to be the writers because it's like not only do you have to make a fourth one, but now you got to make a fifth one as well. But, hey, man, they make a lot of money. And as you said, everyone pretty – I don't think there's anyone out there who dislikes Keanu Reeves. If they do, they might be a sociopath, I'm just saying. <laughs> but, um, Dom, what do you think about uh, John Wick 5 being officially confirmed and the fact that they want to film 4 and 5 back-to-back, back back, sorry, I can't talk, uh, permitting Keanu Reeves' schedule? First of all, I think if people hate Keanu Reeves, that's just like some hipster shit to do. Like, I don't even like that movie that I've watched 10 times. It's terrible. Um, no, uh... I love John Wick 3. I love 1. 2 is one that I haven't watched as many times as the first one and the third one. Um, but this is the way, like, the choreography is done, where the fighting actually looks and feels real. Because we're used to, you know, the way they sh shoot a lot of movies. The action scenes are so fast. I, I used to work at a type one those school. No one fights that fast. Not for real. You know what I mean? So just to see, like, the kind of fluid movements and the hearing stuff like actual fist to body sounds and whatnot. It's just great the way they shot it, which is why the I think the director was like the stuntman before. So he knows exactly how things should look. Um, but the way that the the film moves, I think it's smart to do four and five back to back 
because it is just a continuous story, which is even more crazy that the movie literally picks up exactly scene at, at the, the end scene of the last movie picks right up. So, nah, I mean, I think the writing is, isn't as, doesn't have to be as complex because the action kind of drives the story. You just have to add in, like, who's after them and who's trying to get them, and then you have to come up with a court fight choreography. That's probably the hardest part, so where people don't feel like, I've seen this before. So now, you know, you can't kill anybody with a book or a pencil. You're going to have to use, like, kill a guy with a cat. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to, like, oh, I'm going to use this alarm clock and stick it down his throat. It's not to be something creative. Uh, but, no, I, I mean, I can't wait. Keanu is, like, he's, like I both say, he's, he seems like one of the coolest guys to have ever graced a screen. And I don't know why he's so cool, but, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, apparently he, like, still rides the subway, and there was, like, a story that he was flying commercial on an airline, and something happened with the airline that needed to, like, land, and he was, like, calming everyone down and agreeing to take pictures so that people could, like, be all happy and everything, and I'm like, that that's great, that's amazing, like, just, just pure Keanu. I remember watching the first one, and you guys know how big of, like, a Frank Castle Punisher fan I am and like before I was like no one can beat Frank Castle like he's amazing and then I watched John Wick and I had to sit there and like be realistic with myself and I'm like John Wick may be better and that really hurt That'd be me. a hell of a fight. Yeah. That'd be a hell of a fight. John Bernthal's Frank Castle, Keanu Reeves' John Wick like they would definitely get bloody, and then they would go and hang out with, like, all their dogs and shit like that. Like, I, think, I think it would end up with both of them just completely bleeding out. Both of them are going to die, and they both smoke a cigarette. Just right. kind of back-to-back and have a conversation before they both bleed out. It would end like, um, it would end like the Hateful Eight. I don't, yeah. If you know the Hateful Eight, like, they're both, like, dying and bleeding out. It would end exactly like yep. that. That would be their thing. I'm pumped. I just saw the John Wick trilogy, like, recently. I was new to all of this. It had been one of those things, like, when everyone on, like, Geek Vibes would talk about John Wick, I would just sit there in the corner and go, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, totally. I completely understand what you guys are talking about. And now I really understand what you guys are talking about. So, hey, I'm excited for a fifth John Wick, um, and that's really awesome. But let's move on. Um to more geeky stuff, uh, apparently, The Rock, I always call him The Rock, I know he's like Dwayne Johnson now, but yeah, I always call him The Rock is cooking. <laughs> like, that, I grew up, that, that's what he was, like, I'm 30 now, born 1990, he was The Rock, okay? Yep. Um, but The Rock has seemingly confirmed that he will premiere uh Black Adam's first look at DC fandom on August 22nd. And it's kind of crazy to think that after all this time, because believe me, I was one of those people that was like shitting on it, thinking we're never going to get a Black Adam movie. I don't know why they keep doing this, but now it's seemingly going to happen. So Dane, what do you think about this, that we're finally getting The Rock uh, as Black Adam after all these years? I believe 2014 he's been signed on since then. I, I just want to know, like, if if Dwayne Johnson has teleportation that no one knows about. Right. Because this man is doing six billion fucking things all at once. He's eventually going to be our president within the next, like, ten fucking years. I'm already, like, thinking that. I mean, this guy just confirmed that he was going to be at this DC convention to talk about Black Adam. And I know that he wants to get that going. And he also bought off the XFL from friggin' Vince McMahon. That died, basically, for $15 million. And he's not going to try to compete against the the NFL. He's probably actually going to do something positive with it because it's the fucking rock. You know, I mean, it's it's Dwayne Johnson is ridiculous. He is an anomaly. Uh, he needs to win an Oscar and become president. Those are the next two fucking <laughs> things, basically. So, awesome. I'm excited about Black Adam. I also made the same jokes to you because it's like, when is something going to actually end up happening? But he's doing it. He wants to play this character, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm just wondering what exactly he's going to present with, you know, yeah. at the uh, convention. 
DC continues to kind of like smack me in the face because I was also the person saying there is no Snyder Cut. It doesn't exist. And then suddenly it was like, guess what? There's a Snyder Cut, which I, I still maintain that there is no actual Snyder Cut. Um, Zack Snyder's just being able to make another movie. He always made it seem like it was really, you know, ha it really existed and it was in a vault and all he needed to do was press play pretty much. But I'm just saying we can move on from that. But um, Dom, what do you think about Black Adam finally happening and presenting during DC fandom? The Rock is probably one of my favorite people of all time. <laughs> that dude has been in my life since my childhood. And I know he went to school here in Nashville for a little bit. So, like, I liked him that much more just because there was, like, a like a hometown type of connection. But, uh, like Dane was saying, this guy, I don't know how he does everything he does. He can do no wrong. How I don't understand how you're the, this great businessman. You have a tequila. You buy a football team or a football whole league. You uh, are a dad. You work out literally all day long you have your own shoe like he he i don't know he might be a reincarnation of some kind of deity from a from a past life because this guy just can do whatever he wants to do and he always does it to you know 110 percent um so yeah i mean black adam is probably going to be one of the biggest characters that is that uh, dc has presented so far especially as far as like the villains um, so, I mean, we've seen he's in shape. He's been working out for it. I assume it's going to be something to do with the costume, or he could probably really fly, for all we know. He'll so, he'll show everybody, like, oh, you thought that uh, David Blaine was the only one. I'm the real <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, no, I'm excited, man. Like, that guy, whatever he's a part of, I want to be a part of it, too. So, yeah, I'm excited. Dom, you had made a funny joke like weeks ago when we did another GVL of the po like talking about some sort of possibility if we had a battle between Black Adam, Superman, and Shazam, and it was like some sort of joke about like you got you got Dwayne Johnson, you got Henry Cavill, and here's Zachary Levi. You know, what I mean, <laughs> very much like, what it is. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see Black Adam go against Shazam, and you're going to be like, come on, come on. It's just not like, even possible. Like, man, just don't hurt anybody for real. I know you want to, like, get into it, but, like, you got to chill. Like, I'm ready, you know. <laughs> He's just ready. He's like, I've been waiting, I've been waiting years for this. Years. <laughs> it's been 2014, and it has been years since I, this is all supposed to happen. Um... What was I going to say with that? Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. Doesn't he, really quick, doesn't he also have his show Ballers? Like, yeah. just another... He, he has a game show, too, that he fucking just started. Yeah. 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 Like, it's, it's ridiculous. So, the question is, how long into the movie until we see him do the people's eyebrow? Because I'm going to give it about 15 minutes until he throws it in there. Can I tell you that... Can I tell you, when I was in third grade, I tried to perfect it, like, and I wasn't even into wrestling, like, at all, but I was like, I know that he does, like, this thing with his eyebrow, and I think every kid, like, wants to be, so oh, got oh, it. Dog, dog. <laughs> I tried, I tried to, like, be like, <laughs> he's just, hold just hold one down, it's, it's, I, I was able to do the Star Trek thing, you know, and that, that's my crowning achievement in life. Um, speaking about Star Trek, see, I, I like this. I, I try to always rope things sure. in. Anyway, um, so apparently uh, Noah Hawley, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, um, he was supposed to do a Star Trek film that apparently is dead in the water from the studio because apparently the plot to his Star Trek movie was a virus that wipes out pretty much half of the population across the universe. Oh. And I would say understandably so. They felt that that was not the best type of movie to have during what's going on now. So, uh, Dane, what do you think? Do you think this is a good decision for them to put this on the back burner? 
Yeah, but man, I feel bad for Noah because he's such a brilliant mind. I loved Legion. I loved the the two seasons of Fargo that he he made. Uh, he was supposed to do a Doctor Doom movie for Fox. Uh, well in development for that, and that fell through because of the uh, acquisition of Fox from Disney. And I mean, I still wish they'd let him adapt it. Uh, but he's been writing this Star Trek movie. He obviously came up with this as an idea for a plot. He didn't know the coronavirus was going to break out. And now it's like, I would hope that they would just like let him go come up with something else and at least still attempt directing. He's tr been trying to break through to movies for a while now and just doesn't work out for him. So it, it kind of sucks. But I definitely understand why they're not making this movie, you know? Yeah, I definitely understand given everything that's going on. I personally am kind of more of a Star Trek fan than I am, say, a Star Wars fan. Not trying to perpetuate that old you know, rivalry or anything. I just enjoy <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it. Um, I just want more Star Trek content, you know, because I yeah. feel like J.J. Abrams, you know, his first two uh, Star Trek movies were good, and then, you know, the third one wasn't as well received, and Star Trek now has kind of been uh, declining in popularity. Obviously, with the Disney Star Wars movies, they've kind of, you know, even... Depending on who you talk to, what they think about the recent Star Wars movies, they're at least more in people's like public eye. So the fact that you would have someone who's behind such great shows like Legion wanting to get into Star Trek, that would have been awesome. But I understand. I just hope that maybe they'll give him like a year or two before like knocking on his door again and going like, Hey, Noah, I think things have calmed down. Let's see about making this Star Trek movie. But... Dom, what do you think? Do you think that this was the right decision for them to make? Uh, yes, but I also am like, they're letting Michael Bay do this quarantine virus movie. I was thinking so, that. I was thinking yeah. that. <laughs> so, I mean, and we've seen, like, when we when people thought the world was going to end, we had the 2012 movie, and we've had San Andreas. I mean, so disaster movies work. I mean, I know this isn't a disaster movie, and maybe it's that's why they they said like we should scrap it because Star Trek is very real, like the concepts are very realistic and they're done in a very thoughtful way. And maybe they're like, look, this is a little too real. We don't want to have to, but it is very unfortunate. Um, Star Trek has always had a uh, like the, I was a big um, Next Generation fan, and me too. I love yeah, Patrick Stewart. I mean. Um, so, like, I, it's very unfortunate that, that the buzz of Star Trek has died down. I know they had the um, the series that was on, what, like, NBC or CBS? It was, like, on streaming. It wasn't on TV, so no one really got the chance to watch it. Um, and I know they're trying to do an, an animated series, I believe. Um, I also, I, I actually have my own series as well called The God, <laughs> so check it out. It's a wonderful <laughs> show. But it's on CBS All Access. It's you got to get an account. <laughs> Pay some money, damn it. That's what it is. Uh, I um, pay enough money, man. <laughs> I know, we all do. Alec <laughs> Hart Cable. Come up with another script. Um, I'm sure he had another idea besides this one uh, because there's so much things you can do with Star Trek. Um, but, yeah, it's very unfortunate that he's like, got it, boom. We, we're, you going to do what? <laughs> Scrap it. <laughs> I'm not saying that this wasn't easy to make or anything. Just, you know. So, yeah. I, when you have someone who makes really great content, you want to give them another shot. And I'm sure they will. Um, because when you look at his track record, you, I mean, things are good. And we need good things. Uh, to, especially now. So, if they're going to... Uh, I mean, if anything, they could have just told him to flip in, like, look, it's going to be this virus, and we're going to stop it before it happens. And I don't know. They could have done something with size, scrapping the entire script. They could augment it somehow. But, uh, yeah, I think it was probably the right idea. So. I just, I want more Star Trek content in general. 
And as you said, they're allowing Michael Bay to do his, literally his coronavirus movie. Um, and no one's saying shit. I think he was filming during it. He really wanted to go for the, um, the natural set. You know, he wanted people to get infected. You know, just really feel, man. Like, I just don't understand why. And there will definitely still be a bikini scene with Megan Fox. Don't worry about that, guys. <laughs> and so many explosions in scenes that don't even deserve it. It's good. He's, he's in a bikini and then she explodes. You, never... <laughs> she explodes. you thought that freaking um, Six Underground was bad with all its explosion scenes. No, 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 no. Michael Pay can do even better. He's going all out. Um... Yeah, so I'm I'm a little disappointed about the news. I understand. I want to be, of course, you know, uh, aware of what's going on in the world and how that may look. But I'm still bummed out just because I like Star Trek and I would have liked it to keep going. But um, let's move on. Uh, apparently, Spyglass Media is teaming up with James Wan on a new Knight Rider film. I mean, listen, I like James Wan. Uh, we obviously saw what he was able to do with the Aquaman movie, but I it's gotten to the point where it's like, oh, God, like, is there really no new content out there that they need to reboot Knight Rider? So, um, Dane, what do you think about this? <sighs> Um, great. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, what the hell is James Wan doing? Um, where Knight Rider, the new movie, becomes like the obsession of 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 what we're gonna get in theaters. The thing with Spyglass is they've made movies like The Sixth Sense. They've made movies that are good, and you know, Rush Hour, fun movies, and then they've also made a lot of dog shit. So I'm assuming this might actually cater more towards that. Um, I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean about it, but Knight Rider, are you fucking serious? <laughs> as long as as long as David Hasselhoff plays in it somewhere as a cam, I actually really don't even care if he's in it. You know, um, I don't know. I'm trying <laughs> to be positive. Into it. <laughs> I'm to be positive. Give it to some young actor and help him out a bit. I don't. I don't know who the hell can that be. Maybe Chris Pratt. Put him in this fucking movie. Make it funny. You know, and just like do high tech stuff. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't care. I'm not going to see it. No, fucking no, no, I'm not going to see it either. There's absolutely no part of me that has any sort of interest in this. It's just that when I was scrolling through Twitter, it was one of those things that made me stop and look at it. Cause I was like, really? James Wan? First you want to make a movie about like the weird fucking creatures in Aquaman, and now you want to make a movie about... Um, you know, this talking car, like, what is going on in your head with what you pick as your creative projects, but I don't know, maybe he'll do, so maybe he'll go in more of a, um, Stephen King route, and he wants to do more of, like, a horror thing, who knows, um, Dom, what do you think about this? Why? I don't know why, um, now I'm the same, like, we've been in, we've been in quarantine for what, like, I don't know, four, five, six months, whatever, going on to however long it's going to be. There's been people who have created stories that can be shot. I don't know who asked for this, and I know no one's going to go see it. I've never heard anybody talk about nostalgic shows and bring up Knight Rider, ever. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's not, no, why? Like, I don't need a talking car, I'm sorry. Um, I saw cars, that was good enough. Uh, I I don't understand it. Um, it's, it it seems like, like I said, these are the same people that make all the stuff all the time, and they're just like, hey, I wrote a, a new Night Rider. Why? Like, what? And I bet you what they're gonna do is they're gonna take an episode that was probably the highest rated episode, and they're gonna take that script and try to flip it and make it more modern, and it's gonna be it's gonna be like. Oh, I think I remember that. Like, I don't why I don't I don't get it. Like, but the car know? talks. They <laughs> <laughs> all wants this. That was that was back in the day. She, Knight Rider's gonna be like a Bugatti, or Kip's gonna be like a Bugatti or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't want it. 
I mean, I'll if I have to review it, I'll watch it with an open mind. Um, but I, I don't. So <laughs> it's gonna be one of those things where Kanan is gonna email the two of us and go, "Who wants to review this?" Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> Dom can get it. <laughs> and you're going to be like, damn it, Tia, why the fuck did you leave this to me? Um, yeah, You know what? That was made during a time where cars didn't talk, but now we have like smart cars and smart yeah. cars. Things talk, and it's like, oh my god, a car talks. It's like, yeah, okay. Uh, that my just, just, every day. Who's going to do the voice? That's the question. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Sarah Patrick Stewart. <laughs> get... get <laughs> Hello, what are you doing right now? Get in the damn car. You should get Seth Rogen to do it. Just make it completely <laughs> outrageous and make it very ironic. And now maybe I'll watch it because I can laugh at it. Oh yeah, if you got like Seth Rogen and uh, and what's what's his name, um, uh, James Franco playing the, the role <laughs> yeah. of the Denzel Washington or Denzel Washington. <laughs> Fucking, God damn it, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> uh, Two two very similar guys. Um, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, if you got him to do that, and it was a comedy, and Seth Rogen stoner ass, like, <laughs> do you want a blunt? It's in the it's in the glove box. Like, yeah, that'd be fun. I, I'd be down for that. They need to think that way. I don't know if it's gonna happen with James Wan behind it, but What's yeah. James doing, dude, make a, make another good movie. What the hell? Ugh. He's working again on his uh, movie with. Uh, the crazy creatures from Aquaman. He's really dead set on that. He wants to make that movie. I don't know who's going to see it, but someone apparently. Um, so just a quick uh, little reprieve here. I went on Twitter just kind of looking around, and Kanan just posted. I don't know, Dane, if you know this guy because you are the resident wrestling expert here, but uh, professional wrestler James Harris, a.k.a. Kamala, just passed away. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, he's he's from back in the day. He definitely made his uh, impact in the 80s and 90s. Uh, his his gimmick or or story wasn't the greatest concept because he was a cannibal from uh, Uganda that they brought over here to fight people. So, but yeah. when it came to wrestling, he fought the Undertaker. He was a big monster, so that's uh, very unfortunate. He dealt with diabetes and lost both of his legs towards the end of his life, and uh, you know. Just uh, rough stuff, but uh, rest in peace, Kamala. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to uh, put that in really quick because it's always sad when someone in the entertainment business passes away and we have to report on it. And as I said, I know that you are our resident wrestling expert here, and I wanted to know if you had known about it. So uh, RIP, obviously, to Kamala and uh, our deepest condolences uh, from Geek Vibes Live, but... Uh, let's move on to, we only have, I think, like, one or two left here. Um, just really quick, we can make these uh, quick little points here, but uh, Jason Bateman has been brought in to adapt Superworld. Um, I will admit that I don't know much about Superworld, but Jason Bateman is one of those guys that also is just getting everything. Um, and he's a great director, he's a great creator, and so if he's behind it, you know, I'll be interested in seeing what he's doing and what ideas he has going on for this, but, uh, Dom, what are you thinking? Do you know anything about Superworld that you can educate me on? Uh, so uh, I looked up earlier today, and it was a book that was released this year, which is crazy for the author that you got your book is going to be adapted that quick, um, yeah. but apparently... It's a world where everyone's a superhero or has superpowers except for one guy. And his dad is the most powerful superhero of them all. And he has to go, um, the son, who doesn't have any powers, has to go against this guy in, a, in some firm who his power is, um, like he can shut off anybody else's powers. But since he doesn't have any, he's not affected. And I don't know the, the rest of the plot, um, but I know... I guess it's a really popular audio book right now. So I'm thinking about going ahead and uh, using one of them audible credits because uh, <laughs> I love audio books. Uh, but it, is, it sounds pretty interesting. Um, I don't know why I didn't kind of think of something of that sort. Um, but, yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, and I, I like Bateman, so it should be pretty good. Um, 
Dom, if you like audiobooks, I would suggest buying American Psycho because it is narrated by Pablo Schreiber. And it's pretty good. So if you liked the movie American Psycho, um, the book really is... Uh, um, as you're listening to it, it's nearly identical. You can see how the movie did a really good job in adapting that, and I think that is one of the best audiobooks that I've listened to. It's just, like, super detailed. Like, I listened to it, and I was sitting there going, man, that author was dedicated. <laughs> they were dedicated to, like, researching the price of everything, the model, like, what, just too much. But, um... Dane, from hearing Dom describe Superworld and just the fact that Jason Bateman is attached to it, is there any sort of interest right now for you? Absolutely. I think Bateman is incredibly intelligent, has showed us that he's not just a dude from Arrested Development. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, with Ozark and the fact that he's directed and created a, a, an abundance of the, uh, the story with that, and uh, this is the guy that he did Date Night with, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, the guest, I mean, he's he's come in, uh, Bad Words is another one, you know, that he's done recently. As a director, as an actor, as a producer, he's very intelligent. He has his finger on the pulse, so why not make another, I'm assuming, spoofish movie on the superhero world? I don't exactly know what this story is, like if it's a serious story right. or if it's like dark humor, but... Either way, I know that he's done all those realms, so he'll be able to do it well. And I'm wondering if he is the odd man out in this, if he's the guy that doesn't have superpowers. That's, uh, that would be a funny-ass story beating a character you can play. But he might just uh, direct it, so who knows? I mean, Jason, ba Jason Bateman has a tendency in injecting himself into the stories that he yeah. has something to yeah. do with, such as, I don't know if you guys watch HBO's The Outsider. Um, the adaptation of Stephen King's story, Ben Mendelsohn starred in it. It was actually really good. Um, but he, I produced and directed that show and also starred in it. So, yeah, he's really good. As you said, he's very intelligent. And I think one of probably the most underrated directors, writers out there, you don't necessarily, when even us, when we're talking about potential directors for certain projects, I don't think any of us ever come up with Jason Bateman when he's shown yep. that has the capacity to do it. So um, I'm glad, Dom, that you did some research because I clearly wasn't prepared for it. Um, <laughs> but it sounds cool. Um, you know, I always think that we need more superhero stuff outside of Marvel and DC just to kind of give more of an independent perspective on it. And I think that's why shows like The Boys and Umbrella Academy do well, because they are separated from that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I like seeing Jason Bateman, and he's now currently nominated for an Emmy for his work on Ozark, so good for him. Um, all right, honestly, uh, down to our last topic. And then I'll have like a small little question for you guys. Now, I know, Dane, you said you weren't overly familiar with this one. Uh, me either, honestly, but it's huge right now. So because people have been telling me I should be paying attention to it, I've been paying more attention to it. So uh, popular gamer, Dr. Disrespect. Uh, he's a very popular gamer. He had recently signed a huge deal uh, with Twitch and then was suddenly permanently banned from Twitch. Now, they said they didn't say at all what it was about. Um, I spoke with Brittany, who was uh, one of our associates, and she was saying that if it was anything to do with, say, like sexual harassment, that Twitch would have come out and said it because they've banned other people for something similar in the past, and they've been very open about saying that that was the reason. Yeah. Now, there was other reasons about um, them saying that perhaps it was because Dr. Disrespect was thinking about creating his own streaming platform. They essentially didn't want to give money to maybe their potential competitor, but he has said in the past that he has no idea why Twitch has permanently banned him. 
By the way, Kanan is a huge freaking fan of this guy as well. So if you want to be a friendlier with Kanan, you know, just ask him about Dr. Disrespect. I'm going to message him after and say, Dr. Disrespect sucks. Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> he, he's, he'll ban you from everything in that book. Um, oh, he's so obsessed with this guy. But uh, so Dr. Disrespect, um, what you might call it, return to YouTube. For the first time uh like two days ago and during his live stream says that he still doesn't know why he was banned from twitch so um and also he has said that he's thinking about just kind of experimenting on different platforms and has no intentions of signing permanently to any sort of platform here so i guess my question is um, do you think that Twitch should just come out and say why the hell they banned this guy? And your thoughts, I'm maybe in general, of gamers who are signing these massive deals with uh, platforms. So, Dom, I'll start with you first. This shit is crazy to me because I can't sit and watch anybody play a video game. I've <laughs> never been able to do it. I remember when I was younger, I used to go to my buddy Chris's house. And he always played one-player games. And I'd be in the back like, bruh, like, I'm trying to play too. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't sit here. So I, I, I've, never, I've never understood this whole gaming atmosphere. Um, I'm not a huge gamer anyway, uh, not anymore. But, like, yeah, I, I'll definitely live my life wrong. Because if I would have known back then what is going on now, I would have dedicated my life to playing video games. They make um, a shit ton of money, man. <laughs> they make a shit ton of money. I had a buddy in college back in 2006, and he was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm like, World of Warcraft number two in the world. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I don't know what that means. I'm sure he's a millionaire now. Like, it, it, it makes no sense. Um, but no, like, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be a company where you have millions of people that come watch and they're donating to people and they're doing all these things, transparency has to be, like, number one. You know what I mean? Especially if I'm someone who watched this guy and I donated money to watching his his uh, stream and then he's gone, I'm like, yeah, it's like you, it's like me paying for cable and you cut my cable off for no reason. Like, yo, like, nah, I paid. <laughs> Where I need this guy. Where's he at? Um, so yeah, it it, it is kind of crazy. I, I've noticed a lot of these platforms, whether it be like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter deleting things and not telling people recently and I don't know what that is um I know there's been a lot of people hacking into a lot of different uh platforms so that could be something because for him to be one of the biggest ones and know nothing makes no sense especially when they're bringing eyes to your platform so it makes no sense but I, it's probably the same thing I've seen with PewDiePie and I've seen with Ninja and these other gamers that are big that they said something off color or they cuss too much. These guys were guys that were sitting in the living room playing video games and you expect them to be spokespeople for your platform. That makes no sense. They're not trained for that. They didn't go through any classes to learn how to represent a company. No, they were at home saying, fuck, shit, oh, I'll kill you, bitch. Like, yeah, like that's who these people are. Like, so you got to give them a little bit of a leeway if they're not being overtly sexist or racist or something like that let the gamer be the gamer because that's why people were watching them in the first place yeah i um i mean obviously when i was a kid i played like super mario brothers on the original nintendo and all that but like since that then <laughs> Don't make fun of me. <laughs> oh, no. I'm, from Boston. I'm just busting your chops. It's okay. I'm I'm used to people teasing me about my accent. <laughs> uh, I say like I'm from Yonkers, and people would be like Yonkers or Yonkers. Um, but uh, yeah, I I was never really say like that into gaming as you said, Dom. I can't sit there and watch someone for like the six seven hours that people do. I think the only gamer that I watch is on YouTube. There's this guy called Gray Still Plays. And he just, like, does 10-minute videos of him, like, killing his sims. And I think that's kind of hilarious, so I watch that. But I always maintain that when people complain about, say, like, an hour and a half or a two-hour podcast, I'm like, you watch these Twitch streamers for six hours. You can listen to my podcast. <laughs> you can listen to my... You can also pause 
go do what you want to do and come back. Right? That's right there. You, you know? don't need to listen to it all. People, I got a comment one time on one of the top tens. It's like, well, just tell me what your picks are because I don't have time for a two-hour podcast. And I'm like, all right, well, you can listen to it in your car as you're going, and then you can pause. And I'm not going to give you what I put out because then you can just listen. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people, they listen to a lot of things at one and a half speed. Just speed it up. Yeah, like, just speed up. Like, I'll try talking faster then if you want. I'm from New York. I can speak fast here. Like, you want me to do that? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. But, Dane, um, same question with Dom. You know, what are your thoughts personally on these gamers who are making, like, an, a, a crazy amount of money? And do you think that Twitch should at least come out and say why the hell they banned this guy? Because it's getting enough, like, social media attention here that it doesn't particularly look good on Twitch, I don't think. I think Twitch is being very doctor disrespectful, and I don't think they're going to Twitch on their decision. Um, <laughs> you you, <sorry. laughs> you, said, you said a dad joke worthy of see Dane texted me when Chris said that really bad dad joke in the group text Dane was like god damn Chris I'm like well there you go Dane you, got, you, Chris. <laughs> you got your dad joke in there <laughs> yeah I, and I'm not even a dad that's the crazy part but uh, yeah uh, I, I, I feel old thinking about this concept because I remember first finding out about younger kids watching people play video games and I'm like it was kind of like that South Park episode I'm like why don't you play the fucking video games like what the hell are you doing and it drove me crazy and um, but at the same time I'm obsessed with watching reaction videos of younger people watching music or listening to music that I love that yeah. they've never heard of so it's a weird concept when it comes to that on YouTube or not on YouTube on Twitch on whatever platform it's just funny because it's it's starting to become that Twitch is more anal about their stuff than even Twitter and Facebook because yeah. it's like you can get one little thing on there and you're fucking done. You know, they're more anal than Riley Reed. If anyone gets that, <laughs> I'm I sorry for you. I, I know that Dom probably would get that. <laughs> uh, anyways, but, uh, yeah, it's just um, – I don't know. I mean, I, I just think it's kind of a bit ridiculous. Like there was a, a wrestler that I'm a fan of called – um called Rusev that uh, played video games, and his wife joined him, and she was in a bikini. So they got banned over that. And it's like, all right, guys, like, you know, if, if people aren't saying some fucking fucked up racial shit or, or doing, saying saying satanic rituals or some shit like that, like, what the fuck are they doing? A bikini? Like, what did this, this, I mean, maybe they just read his name. They were like, I don't know. He might be disrespectful. I have no fucking clue. I, I just don't, I don't really... This is a new thing to me. I watch Twitch uh, to watch Impact Wrestling for free because they have a channel they play it. That's about it. Well, I mean, I wouldn't know a whole lot, but Brittany, one of our associates, actually my co-host on the Top 10, is an avid Twitch streamer. So she gives me all of the information. I called them Twitchers. Apparently that's not their name. Um, I thought it would be because... That's a know. meth head, Tia. <laughs> that's a tweaker. <laughs> oh, okay. That's right. Well, because you call YouTube people YouTubers, I just thought it made sense, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I know of, I think I had heard of some, like, female Twitch streamer who, like, accidentally moved her camera the wrong way and, like, it showed cleavage and Twitch was, like, banned. And I was like, what is this site ran by? Like a bunch of Mormons or something? I guess Probably. No, Out of Utah. Oh, that's that's, that's exactly what the fuck is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah. Um, Where's the Twitch headquarters? <laughs> we got to look up. Like, why are they so anal about this shit? Um, but the last topic I wanted to go is just a quick uh, question to both of you guys because I think it's interesting as well uh, if you you know, you want to be the type of person, I guess, has your, like, finger on the pulse of, like, social media stuff, but uh, Trump, I know, everyone's favorite person here, uh, <laughs> says that he is banning TikTok, uh, and it has 45 days to get bought by someone, or it's gone forever, so I wanted to know what your guys' opinions on that are, because I know we're 
really down with TikTok here, but uh, Dom, what are your thoughts about this whole thing with TikTok? Um, <laughs> we know that Dom is make, secretly making TikTok videos. He just hasn't shared his user handle with us. <laughs> I wish I had that much, like, uh, I don't have, I have too much, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a shy person. I can't put myself out there, you know, I mean, with the TikTok elbows. I can't do it. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, it's it's very weird. And for, to me, I know that Trump takes everything very personal. And I know that uh, the K-pop fans on TikTok did the whole thing where they did the uh, all the tickets for his Tulsa rally. And he thought there was millions of people coming. And there was only a couple thousand. And, it's, and they everybody said it was because of TikTok. They banded together and was like, look, we're going to make him look stupid. And they did. And, you know, so it kind of sounds like he's a little upset about it. Um, I know it's supposed to be a Chinese company, but from what I saw this week, the CEO is, like, in the U.K. somewhere. Um, And they said that they're not um, using anybody's information. But I know also that every Chinese company has to give their information to the communist Chinese government. So the government and, and the tech companies are like one. So I don't know where lies the truth. Um, I just don't know what information they could actually use. Cause I'm not super, you know, informed on the, the data part of it. Um, but no, it, it seems very much like he's hating. Um, you got you got punked and he don't like it. Uh so everything that he, that's good that he doesn't like, he tries to undo it. And we've seen it for the past five, four years or whatever. Oh, God, so, you already said five. I was like, it hasn't been that long, Dom. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. He seems he's very salty, and he should be focused on other things, like trying to fix this corona shit. Um, but we see that he has more important things like TikTok. I mean, maybe maybe he got banned. <laughs> maybe he got banned for like liking too many like young girls' videos or something. I don't know. I've seen his past. I saw the files of him and Epstein. I know what they did. So I don't know. It's it's kind of suspect to me. Um, I did read say one article that said while TikTok does share information, it's nothing. Um, out of bounds as to what other apps say as Facebook shares. So it doesn't seem like it's necessarily sharing any sort of exuberant amount of information. I will say before I pass it over to Dane to ask his opinions, I'm not necessarily mad over the fact of TikTok potentially being banned. Um, I mean, obviously, I... As you said, Trump needs to focus on other things. Like, I'm now recently unemployed, so where's my extra money for unemployment? Now I, like, really care about this. Um, but what you call it? I think that TikTok is also given a platform to a lot of people who don't necessarily deserve a platform, just based on what I've seen there. Yeah. But then at the same point, I do think it's uh, suppression of free speech. So I go back and forth with it. Um so yeah, that that's pretty much my opinion with it. It's uh, it's one of those things where I'm like terrible people, but also the suppression of free speech. So I, I go like back and forth with my opinions on that. But uh, Dane, what do you think of this whole TikTok thing? Well, Tia, the one thing I want to tell you is that we're not going to be getting rid of TikTok. It's going to be me in charge of TikTok. It's going to be a better TikTok, a much bigger TikTok, a wonderful TikTok. It's going to be the best TikTok that's ever been TikTok. So, uh, yeah, that's um, – I think this is fucking stupid. I'm sorry. There, like you said, like, like you both said, there's definitely things that we need to be worrying about TikTok. And – if you're going to go for this, I understand that all this goes against, you know, like you were saying, free speech and shit. But why don't you get rid of Facebook and Twitter while you're at it? Because they talk shit about you, and they're toxic as fuck. And humans really don't need it unless it's for business. Honestly. But still, keep those fucking entities and go for the newest, shortest way for people to give a little bit of content. Look, I, I'm just looking forward to the reality TV show that's coming up where we get to watch the two best people to represent us, Joe Biden and Trump, have a wonderful conversation with each other live on television. 
We don't know if there's going to be slime. The, you know, they might do the Nickelodeon fucking thing for both of them. It's like, my God, what the fuck is going on? As being a moderate, it makes me want to just take a hammer and bash myself in the head. But honestly, then I'll be on their level, so I might vote for one of them. So I'm not going to do that. Anyways, yeah. Good job, Orange Man. Good job. Your dick's not small. Anyways. <laughs> that reminds me, have you guys seen um, the pictures for the upcoming show, The Comey? I want to say if I'm saying this right, The Comey Rule? Um, oh, God. Something Gleason will be playing uh, Donald Trump. It's an upcoming miniseries on Showtime, which uh, is talking about like the whole you know Comey thing. And uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but the guy who's playing Trump looks like exactly like it. And Jeff Daniels is playing Comey. And like I think Vanity Fair did a thing. And they're like, the, the show that's going to piss off Trump. And I'm like, I can't wait for him to use it during his rallies. He's going to be in his rallies with his millions of people there and be like, have you seen the Kami rule? Absolute bullshit. <laughs> Fake news. Fake news. I just want, like I said, instituted, since we've just made like a complete monoc or mockery of the debates now in, in general the last couple of years, let's just give them ninja swords and just see what the fuck happens. <laughs> Um, by the way, I have a quick question before we wrap everything up here, which I know this is totally derailed and gone into like a crazy sort of thing. But Dom and I talked about a few weeks ago the whole Kanye thing. Um, I thought he dropped out of the race, and now I'm seeing things about him go like doing rallies again. And I was like, wait, I thought he dropped out. I thought that was a thing, and now he's talking about rallies. I just saw an article where it says that... Um... And I don't know, I didn't get to read it, I just saw the headline, um, but it said that Kanye confirmed, or his camp confirmed, that their whole point of doing it was to take votes away from Biden. I don't know how true it is, uh, that's what people suspected, I can kind of see it, but like, it, it's ridiculous, The whole that whole thing is ridiculous. It's it's just crazy, the whole thing. So I would say, I guess, before we lose any brain cells thinking about all of this, um, let's wrap up here. Guys, it has been an amazing Geek Vibes Live. Dane, I'm so happy again to have had you back. It's been a long time. I think you and I used to do the GVLs back when I first started with Geek Vibes about two and a half years ago yeah, um, it's been that long yeah <laughs> and i always love having uh dom here with me because he's just fantastic but uh dane please uh plug your shit i know that you got wrestling geeks alliance and um i know it's been a while since you've done monday suck but let us know what can we expect from you all right i want to get back on the monday suck train so i will say that it just Having to talk about stuff that we were just talking about in much more of an in-depth way means I have to pay attention to some of that fucking shit. So that's what keeps me. But, hey, like I said, we got the debates coming up. I want to make fun of uh, of Trump and uh, whatchamacallit, Biden. Uh, so it, it will be fun to do that, and maybe we can throw some movie news and shit in there. But I do have a show. If you're into wrestling, we film it twice a week. We usually have the show episodes up on Friday. And on Sunday, uh, one of them, it's all for pro wrestling. One where you review uh, AEW, NXT, and Impact, basically the non-big WWE. And then we do Raw and SmackDown. And me and Christopher Patton, who was supposed to join us but couldn't, um, usually want to scoop out our eyeballs and smack our heads with them because of how terrible they're written. Uh, thanks, Vince. He's like 70 million years old. Fucking goddamn it. Anyways, but that's neither here nor there. Check those episodes out. You just got to... You can either go to geekvisenation.com, you'll find links to everything for that, or you can just uh, Google Wrestling Geeks Alliance, and you'll find platforms on Spotify, on YouTube, on iTunes, all that good stuff. So definitely check that out, and thanks for having me back. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I love making fun of orange people. So you know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Chris had told me yesterday that you guys were going to go for like four hours yesterday. Did it actually I end didn't up? I want to. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> well, again, as I said, if you can watch a six or eight hour gaming stream, you can listen to a podcast and you can pause, Beautiful. which is the beauty of all of it. Um, but Dom, I know that you had some very exciting interviews lately. Um, I watched the latest one and I even texted Kane and I was like, Dom is such a great interviewer. And I like the new little border that's around your interview there. But um, yes, please let us know what you have going on. Yeah, so I have a new interview out on uh, the Geek Vibes, uh, I think it's a podcast, YouTube channel, um, with um, Stephen Moyer from True Blood and The Gifted, and then Casper Van Dien, which we all know is Johnny Rico from Starship Troopers. Hell yeah. Um, it was a great Should interview. played Hal Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're both really, really great guys, um, and uh, I, I don't know if anybody caught it. If you look at the beginning of the interview, I messed up. And you can see it on Casper's face, and it's because I introduced them in the wrong order because uh, one is a star of the movie and one is more a supporting role. Uh, I just, But I kind of went in the order of how I saw them on, on the screen. Um, but it, it, was a, it was a fun start to the, to the interview, and they were, you know, really good, cool about it. Um, and since um, L.A.'s Finest... Is now finally coming to Fox. Uh, it was uh, previously on a streaming service that like nobody used or cable that nobody has. Um, but if LA's Finest is a spinoff from Bad Boys 2, and it's got um, Jessica Alba, Gabrielle Union. I think they both like produce on the show. But a friend of mine is a writer. We and her did an interview pff, months ago, and I kind of been sitting on it. But now that the show's about to come on about dropping it and it'll be on geek vibes and also be on my podcast that i haven't done in half a year which is chopping up with the homies um but that's dropping sometime soon and of course i got reviews out the wazoo coming so you know that's what i got going yeah, uh, Dane is definitely the review king, as I said, whenever Kanan messages us asking if either Dom or I want something, I'll be like, Dom can have it. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, please make sure you check that both out. Both Dane and Dom's projects can be found on our YouTube channel, Geek Vibes Podcast, as well as geekvibesnation.com that has links to all of our social media platforms. You can find us on all of the major podcast networks like Dane Says, Spotify, Casper, Box, Apple, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, all that jazz. As for me, um, I have interviews recently with J.V. Smooth and John Lutz of the Quibby's upcoming Mapleworth Murders. I was able to interview Boyd Holbrook of Quibby's The Fugitive. He is a personal, one of my favorite actors, so that was really fun. Uh, but please make sure you check that out. As I said, I'm on all those platforms as well. I write a lot of news stories as well as doing our top ten. Uh, Brittany and I just did the top ten favorite novels, which is something kind of different of us we usually do tv and movies that was a lot of fun so just make sure you check us out please give us a like subscribe and all that stuff and uh we will see you next time thanks guys peace out